December 2022, the European Parliament were preparing for a crucial vote condemning human rights abuses in the Middle East when Deputy President Eva Kindly received a message. My dear, my ministry doesn't want paragraph A about FIFA and Qatar. Please do your best to remove it via voting before 12 noon or during the voting, please. This text message had come directly from Qatar's EU envoy, Abdelaziz bin Ahmed Al Malki, and was brought to light after the Belgian police raided Eva Kindly's Brussels flat, where they found 100 and 50,000 euros of Qatari cash. Typical socialist uh, hypocrisy, you know. They are uh, preaching uh, water and drinking wine. This incident was just the tip of a multi-million euro iceberg, now known as the Qatargate scandal. Over the following months, the inquest discovered inference-breaking deals worth millions struck between the European Union's political staff and Qatar, as well as Qatari pacts to funnel hundreds of thousands into individual MEPs' election campaigns. I think um, whenever power is concentrated in one place, we have uh, abuses and temptations to abuse. There are a lot of members of this parliament who see federalism and globalism as more important than defending their national interest, defending their culture, defending their identity, there will always be people who will sell out European interests, regardless who the buyer is. So who are the Qataris and what exactly are they paying for? Qatar is by almost any definition a third world country, a tiny kingdom located in the Persian Gulf. It has a population of about 300,000 citizens, no concept of democracy or human rights, and an indentured workforce of around 2.3 million foreign workers who do not have the status of citizens or access to the enormous wealth of Qatar's ruling class. That wealth comes from the nation's primary resource, gas, which has elevated this feudal society to global prominence while they continue to be aligned with Iran, Iraq, Russia, and terrorist groups such as Al-Qaeda, the Muslim Brotherhood, and Hamas. This is something we cannot politically uh, accept, that we have corruption as an instrument to gain political influence. The 2022 scandal started after Western football teams covered up their gay pride solidarity badges while playing matches in Qatar, and it became obvious that Western countries were defaulting on their liberal ideology in order to kowtow to a nation whose principles would usually warrant severe sanctions and embargoes. We need to take um, a case against those who are playing a role of the useful idiots among the Europeans uh, for the Qataris. And this is a typical example. Qatargate is about the hypocrisy of the socialists, you know. They are lecturing us about the solidarity, about the morality, and then at the same time accepting the cash money in the Igalit's bags. Qatar is everywhere. Qatar is in the, in, in the has conquered Europe. The football teams are full of Qatar, and there are so many people who are attached now to interests of Qatar, or, or who are being paid directly or indirectly. The Qatari interests uh, have an influence which is annoying and I would say terrifying. Unfortunately, what we saw in the Qatar Gate uh, scandal is that uh, relatively cheaply, uh, there are MEPs who are willing to sell out their country and the European Union. It's despicable that these people, with ongoing inv investigations, were allowed back into the parliament and walk on these corridors uh, after being caught red-handed and allowed to vote. I mean, we even had these people vote uh, about concerns about rule of law in Hungary. It's absurd. It's completely absurd. Lo que sí que tenemos claro es que países como Qatar, países como Marruecos, influyen en las decisiones de Bruselas más de lo que puede influir la nación polaca o la nación española que no son escuchadas. As a Polish South African who grew up during the accelerating Brexit movement in London, I can tell you that Qatargate absolutely confirms the Eurosceptic idea that the European Union is a pseudo-state designed to give the semblance of democratic consent to the interests of foreign powers, commerce and political hustling. They defend everything but European values. Why do you get elected in Europe to hate Europe? This is just self-destruction. The institutions need to do a better job in, in surveilling um, themselves and, and preventing uh, corruption. It seems there are political leaders that just want to you know, put it under the, the rug and it will disappear the issue because so far I haven't seen a proper investigation going on and 
calling those accountable who actually have received the bribes. I don't think there's going to be lessons learned. Not necessarily. They would just say, you know, well, that was a mistake of those MEPs. It's not institutional problem. No, it is. Such attempts to, to corrupt foreign politicians, uh, this will happen uh, for eternity. As, uh, as far as we have political systems, there will be attempts from Qatar, from China, from Russia, from wherever, to corrupt our politicians. And we need to have a strong anti-corruption instrument on the European level. So what measures can be taken to prevent countries like Qatar from infiltrating and subverting such a massive political machine as the EU. Well, I think that increased transparency is uh, very important and we need to, as members of the European Parliament, uh, openly disclose uh, who we are meeting, for instance. I, I did that already before, it was mandatory. Now it's mandatory and that's a good thing, but we also need to check so that uh, alleged uh, NGOs actually are NGOs and not fronts for illegal activities by uh, Islamic dictatorships or, or others uh, such as Russia. We should be more vigilant, obviously. Um, you know, the, the European Parliament is a place of uh, many different political groups. I've noticed that uh, the socialists are quite prone to corruption. They're not immune to this. As far as Qatar goes, it's not a surprise that foreign governments want to lobby uh, politicians uh, to advance their own interests. The solution may be political, or it may be social, raising awareness of Qatari infiltration. But we must be careful that our reactions don't create worse problems than they solve. Some of the measures taken were not the wisest, limiting our uh, opportunities to have a more uh, discreet connection with opposition movements in countries that are dictatorships. Because uh, a lot of people who would like to meet us, people from Iran, uh, people from the opposition, uh, they would sometimes like to meet a European elected official, European member of parliament, for example, without this meeting, uh, being set on public records. What have we done politically? So we changed our internal rules in a way where I say, come on, this is ridiculous. So to prove my personal income situation, to get a proof what is on my bank account, do we stop corruption, political corruption, in checking my bank accounts. What we experienced in Qatargate, has there been money on the bank account? No, we were talking about money in cash. So this is our political answer. We change our rules for members of parliament and, and politically we do nothing. Qatar are getting away with passing bribes for favors. If we respond by further reducing our democracy, European citizens will have been swindled twice, and they will notice.